or to another, you were looking at 15 feet, including the floor thickness, and there was great need for an elevator. Now, we didn't have the money for the elevator, so the Shamrock American Club, again, they gave 35,000 towards the installation of the car and to purchase the equipment to run the car three floors high. Oh, three floors high. Okay. We didn't have the money to go to the fourth floor, the but we made provisions oh. in the piston going into the ground yes. that it would be long enough and it would be installed to eventually bring the car to the fourth floor. Now, And that's where Burke dug out the foundation. That's where Bob Burke yeah. dug the footings yeah. for that elevator. But that was a lot of clay. A lot of clay. A lot of clay there. But the fact we were inside, we didn't have to go so deep yeah. because we weren't exposed to freezing. It oh. was smack in the middle of the building. Yeah. The only reason, if they get the right soil, the right yeah. clay, you don't have to go down so deep. Right, right. And the Chicago code for a home would require you to be down four feet. Yes. That's to bring you below the frost line. Yeah. Now, Mike Shevlin worked for U.S. Steel. Yes. And he had connections there. And U.S. Steel donated all the steel beams to erect the enclosure around the elevator car. Oh. And the elevator is in an air shaft in the middle of the building. Yeah. So we didn't lose any space yeah. inside. Yeah. We gained space by putting the elevator out in the air shaft. Oh. Now there was a, a, Very a, a Michael Herity, they call him Mickey Herity. Yeah, Mickey Herity, yeah. Yeah, he was involved with the Iron Workers Union. Yeah, yes. He was able to get all the cladding donated yeah. oh. for the outside of the shaft. Yes. So when you look out the windows and you see all this metal on the outside, yeah. it's like an exterior siding. Sure. You can thank Mickey Herity. He was the one that got that donated. Do you know, and uh, Mike Shevlin got the steel donated. And Bert the Shamrock the and the Shamrock American <laughs> paid for the car 30, and the installation of the car. And yes. Bert dug the That's foundation. Right. Yeah. So with a combination yeah. of things like yeah. that. But but you know what, Ambrose, they needed someone to be in charge. And that was you. I know. Right? I took that, I took yeah, on that right, task. You, you took yes. on the task of like the contractor. Yes. They but, the but then everything. That's correct. But then you had all those different people that took charge in the boiler room. Yeah. Took charge in the theater. The theater was one of the first uh, places we started renovating. Yes. And uh, you would you figure Mary O'Reilly and and uh, Maureen Cashin. Yeah. They took care of what now we call the shape shifters. Yeah. Any plays that were going on, they would coordinate all of that kind of thing. Now the painting, when we started to paint yeah. the theater, you know, there was uh, plastering to be done. Yes. There was peeling paint yes. all over the place. Yes. And uh, we had a man that came there uh, let me see now, his name was Crawford, Des Crawford. Yes, yeah, yeah, Des Crawford. Now... Mari's husband. That's correct. Very good friend of my wife. Yes. Yeah. Now, Des was one of the first guys to come there to do the painting, and uh, Bill Whelan. Yes. They were both from Dublin. Yes. Now, there was one other man that came there. Let me see if I can recollect. And, and Des... Uh, he, he passed away. Uh, oh, he did, yeah, yes. Uh, uh, Not too long ago. Mar yes. Yeah, he passed away. But he was one of the starting painters that came in there. And Bill Whelan. Now then later on, we had Jerry Archibald. Yeah. He got involved in the painting. He came there and he took charge yeah. of the painting. And Bill Whelan still stayed on with us. And uh, Danny Degnan. Yes. He's still in the Heritage oh. Center. Yeah. They became uh, part of the building yeah. to do the painting. Yeah. You know what? You mentioned all the male that were involved, but what did the women do? The women well, the were women, there. I mean, the women the were women there are, that supplied the food yes. and cooked the dinners. Yeah, and the uh, cleaning too. I mean, they yes, were, right. Yes. They came to the kitchen and uh, cooked a good working man's yes, meal. Yes, yes. 
Uh, you'd go in there and at they 12.30. Still do it now. They still do it now. Yeah. You'd go there at 12.30 and have a good working man's lunch. Yes. Hot dinner. Yes. And at 9.30, they'd have a tea break and yes. coffee. Yes, yes. Yeah. All of that. Everyone volunteer, male, right. female, right. maybe kids came now, in volunteer. Even to have our first meeting, our first get together for the workers. We'd normally have that yeah. a little bit after Christmas. Yes. We did not have the money to buy to bring in a caterer. And all those ladies cooked at home yeah. and brought the food and we had a great party. And Tom Cooney from the Cooney Funeral Home, they paid for the liquor <laughs> yes. for, for that first get together yes. that we had in the heritage and a few more after that. Do you know what? Uh, Ambrose, I have never tasted the best potato salad. Uh, I don't know if you knew a family by Mike Griffin, his, his father. Yes, yes. I knew he worked in the Heritage yeah, Center. His, he was his, a plumber. Yeah, his mother makes yeah. the best potato salad yes. I ever had. Yeah. <laughs> now, Frank Griffin worked yeah. in the Heritage Center. I'm sure when Mike Griffin was only a young fellow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His father worked there with the plumbers. Yeah, and, and, and they, make, uh, they, they made the best brown bread around. That's correct. Yes, yeah. I mean, excellent. Yeah, I, I she, look forward to everything. She was time. a talented lady. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, now, with the fifth province, yes. when we decided to do that area down there, uh, we had a lot of guys that came from Ireland that were stone masons. Yeah. We had Johnny Joyce and his brother Pat Joyce. Now, they had done the stonework uh, in the fireplace, in the immediate oh, the fireplace. fireplace. Now, oh. Kevin Moran, he done the slate floors yes. in the her in the yeah. fifth province, and he also built the chimneys yeah. from the first floor up and out through the roof. Let me show a picture. Okay. Of uh, and it's, it's the first slide. It's the Ambrose without your shirt. Well, that doesn't matter. With, with three uh, others on the roof. Mm -hmm. There uh, and 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 you mentioned that the separate flume that came up bypassed the uh, there, there. There is Ambrose on on the stream there. And, and, and uh, uh, what are you doing there? Uh, we were building the chimney on the roof. That was part, you see the scaffold protruding up. Yeah, who are the, th uh, do you re uh, remember? Uh, there Marty Mersch was there, I know, which would be in the lower right-hand corner. Yes. Okay. Now, I can't see the other two clearly, but I know I'm standing in the middle with no T-shirt. Right, no T-shirt, yes, yeah. yes. And Marty Mersch is down yeah. in the bottom right-hand corner, and he has no T-shirt. <laughs> yes, right. And, and, and that's, they were all volunteers. All volunteers. All volunteers. All just volunteers. Uh, because when you built the roof, you had to make room for the fireplace. That's correct. Coming up. Yes. And, 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 and that, that had time. to come out through the roof and right. through each floor. Right. And there was three fireplaces, see? Yeah. There was one on the second floor in the Shamrock American room. Yes. And that's all done in brick. A excellent now, fireplace. Kevin Moran done that yeah. with Gabe Keelahan. Oh. And then when we got to the third floor, yes. which was many years later, yeah. uh, Johnny Joyce that worked on the fireplace on the first floor, yeah. he'd on the fireplace on the third floor. Oh. That's in 304. Uh, I, I, I wonder if there's any relationship to uh, Tony Joyce. They could be because <laughs> they come from Connemara. <laughs> they come from the Joyce country. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then also, uh, let's see the next uh, slide. Uh, you have Ambrose working on the roof, uh, on the floor. Remember you mentioned the floor? Here, uh, here's your, the floor here. That's, that's in the floor down in the fifth province. The fifth province there. Yeah. And, and, and uh, what about the fifth province? Uh, you, uh, you were having trouble, they had to float the floors there, right? No, that's floors are floated there. Yeah. Now let me tell you about the hardwood flooring. Yeah. Tommy Gibbons. Uh, he's a very well-known developer on the north side. Okay. He was instrumental in getting all that hardwood maple from Piper's Alley. Oh, he was yeah, our I connection uh, up there. Up on North Avenue Well Street. That's correct. Okay. And our guys went down and lifted the floor and tied it in bundles yeah. and brought it to the Heritage Center. Yeah. It was used maple flooring and it suited our pocketbook. Yes. The top price was right. Yes. Now that Tommy Gibbons, he comes from Tormacady and he gave us several antiques for the Heritage Center. Oh. Along with getting all that wood donated. Yeah. Now as we laid up the floor, we became short. Oh. We didn't have enough. Yes. Like our bank <laughs> account, we didn't have enough. Yeah. Tommy Gibbons went out and bought out of his own pocket. Yes. 
to make up the shortage oh. that he was responsible for furnishing the materials for that floor in the fifth province. Well, thank you, Tommy Gibbons. That's right. Because now. the fifth province uh, is a When we done the arches there. Yes. When we done the, yes, arches, the arches. Yes. We had a Dublin man by the name of Ike Deering. Oh. And he done, if you stand inside in the bar area yes. and you look out into the hallway, yes, yeah. all, all the arches yes. are done in an imitation stone look. Oh. He done that in yeah. plaster. Yeah. He was a very talented man. He has passed away, Ike Deering. And, and, and the fifth province, uh, as you walk down the hallway, as you come into the fifth province, you have the, uh, the uh, 30 counties. Yes, correct. Uh, we uh, have the 32 counties. Uh, 32 counties. 32. So we, uh, have, of all their we flags. have 16 beams yeah. in the ceiling. Yeah. And on the end of each beam, yeah. each beam has two ends. Yeah. So 16 beams, and each end we have an, a county yeah. crest yeah. on each end of the beam. Yeah. So that's how we have the even 32 with the even 16 beams. Now here's some pictures here. Uh, here's uh, you. Uh, you're you're in the middle. Yeah, that's correct. And and, and so uh, uh, my eyes aren't as good, but these are some of the workers that were volunteers at the Irish. That's Center. correct. Yeah. yeah. And and so uh, uh, you had an awful lot of volunteers. I don't believe anyone will ever realize the contribution that they made to the Heritage no. Center. Because you know, uh, I would mention not only did you do it for the Irish in Chicago, McConey, you did it for everyone because everyone, regardless if they're Irish or not, could come to the Irish Center and listen to the music, yes. learn about culture, learn about poems, poetry, Correct. the author. I mean, yes. this is an yeah. opportunity for everyone. That's, you, that's what you gave. When you think of the Gaelic classes and you think of the Irish music yes, and you think like John O'Grady now, uh, he was very instrumental in getting the Irish classes started yes, there. Yeah. And when it came to the Irish books in the, Herit in the library, he uh, transferred the name in Gaelic into English. Yes. So we have a collection of Gaelic books yes. also. The large, I, I think large your library is the largest in the United States, the Irish, yes. because I um, met some people from Phoenix, Arizona, uh, as O'Hare went mm -hmm. to San Francisco with his movie camera to bring back to their people. Yeah, to there steal was, their ideas. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the Irish from Phoenix yeah. came over to the uh, Irish Center here in Chicago to see what you did so they could build their Irish Center in Phoenix. You, yeah. you see how it moves? Sure. And, yes. and, and so, so you have to get yeah. ideas and, and, yeah. and, and also the fifth province. Yeah. Do you know now, what besides, let, let's, we're, we're getting a little bit ahead okay. here. When John O'Grady uh, started those classes, yes. he had help. Oh, now, yeah. he had an, an Irish-American girl there, Kelly Shea Doherty. Okay, yes. And she was a great contribution to the classes oh. and went to Ireland two years to go to school there for Gaelic. Oh. And then we have a Pather Oma, and he teaches there. He teaches there up in 304 mm. Gaelic classes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have all of that kind of thing that came to us for free. Yes. That kind of talent. Yeah. So uh, if you figure like the plumbing, we had a Bill Doherty. Yeah. He came there and a Martin Clancy yeah. and a John Cawley yeah. and uh, a Martin Wolf. Yes. Now they started, they all came from the one plumbing contractor. Yeah, what, what was the name of the contractor? Uh, that I don't know. Oh, yeah. Because we should give him credit. Yes, uh, it might have been uh, Shamrock Plumbing. Oh yeah. Okay. And uh, they, the uh, plumbing supplies, a lot of them were donated by Dan Lydon. Okay. Now Dan Lydon was very involved in the plumbers union yeah. and he was the organizer of the St. Patrick's Day parades. Oh. He put a lot of materials our way for free. Yeah, you know what, I, I'm a retired 130, but not a plumber, I but see. a uh, technical engineer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we were very, very fortunate to think that all those trades, now for example, the electrical. Yes. We had a Pat Fagan. Yes. Pat McKenna. Yes. A John Mulcrone. Yeah. They all took charge of the electrical and a Ray Fibs, 
he has passed away yeah. and, and Pat Fagan has passed away. Yeah. And we still have a good showing of Irish electricians that come to the Heritage Centre. All of that that made it what it is today. Because, you know, to do to remodel a building that's about, you said, 86, 88,000 square feet. Yes. And, and to re do something remodeling, you need almost every trade mm -hmm. in the building trade to remodel and fix sure. up that building. And, you know, sure. think of any trade you needed that at that building. Yes. You see, when we started in, in the theater, there was a lot of plaster carvings that were done there. And we had a Sean Ridgeway. He came there with Des Crawford. Okay. And they were able to have materials donated. Yes. From Peterson Lunn Paint Company. They're no longer in business. Yeah, that, that's what Mary Crawford was telling my wife. That's right. Mary told Sherry that uh, yeah. he worked hard. He yeah. stayed, they stayed late. They stayed late and they that the theater would open. Yes. Now, I didn't go on vacation that year, <laughs> no. so the theater would open. Oh. oh. <laughs> so that'll give you an idea of the type of interest. Oh, yes. Every, every, you and everyone had. Yes. In that center. Yes. Yeah. So after the theater, you have the uh, chandeliers that are nice, uh, excellent. Uh, uh, we had... Uh, you see, Kevin Sherman was our volunteer architect. Oh, okay. And Pat McCarthy was our structural engineer. Oh. He was for oh, free. I, I'm good friends with Pat McCarthy. Yes. And then Jim Kinney yeah. was our mechanical engineer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had everything on a silver platter yeah. for free. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, I think Pat is doing the structural work for your roof, too. Today that's correct. Yeah, he's doing yes, the Pat That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Now, explain the, so now, you, so the fifth province you did the fifth province, you had a floating floor, but yes. what is the meaning of the fifth province? Do you know when Robinson came? Okay. What did Robinson say? Before says? it was the fifth province, it was the members lounge. Okay. Now, when Mary Robinson arrived into the Heritage Center, she made a remark. Yes. Ireland has four provinces. Yes. Now, the fifth province of Ireland, from my upbringing, was within the tone of the Bow Bells in London. Yeah. That was referred to, if you were going to England, to the London area, you were going to the fifth province of Ireland. I, so she made a remark when she visited the Heritage yeah. Centre, this is just like the fifth province of Ireland, something Ireland does not have. And then she said, it's neither there nor here. That's correct. But it's what's in your heart. Yeah. That is the fifth province. Exactly. I, exactly. I remember when she was there and Sherry and I were there. Mm -hmm. there. Uh, explain uh, about the library. Do you have anything about now, the library? First of all, I'd like to mention oh. when we were talking about all of the different talent that came through the door to promote Irish culture. Yeah. You figure we had an old rice. Now, he had. it was a great contribution for teaching the kids the music. And he put a lot of time into the Heritage Center yes. and had those classes every Saturday. Yeah. Now we had a Mickey O'Donnell. He took charge of the sheet metal work. If there was any sheet metal work to be done, Mickey O'Donnell would oh. handle it. Oh. And he was a union uh, sheet metal worker. Yes. Good for the heritage, no yeah. charge. <laughs> well, uh, uh, let's, let's bring up uh, uh, another uh, 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 slide. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we got Ambrose. You're working in the ceiling on, on a light, uh, Ambrose. Uh, what 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 room w was that in? Uh, to give you an idea, you that see? was not in any room. That was in the boiler room. Oh, that's in the boiler and room. That <laughs> chandelier was stored down there. Oh, I, I thought that was hanging from the. It ceiling. was hanging. It was <laughs> hanging from some plumbing pipes. Okay. But uh, what I'm doing there, yeah. I'm building a catwalk for the workers okay. across the steam pipes. So oh. they could do some work up there. Okay. At first I thought, what is Amber? That must be in some room, but I never realized it was a boiler. I was putting a catwalk in for the plumbers to get the new copper lines up to the bathrooms. Oh. That's what I was doing there. And then, and then the next slide, Sherry. Let us bring up the next slide. Ambrose, uh, you're, uh, you're on the roof. Uh, you're facing I'm the way. I'm framing out the capping stone for the chimney. For the chimney? Uh, that's the main. That's not for the fireplaces. That's from the boiler room, that chimney. Okay. And the, there was a lot of decay in the brickwork, and the tuck pointers, which were volunteers from Local 52, 
uh, lo uh, the Tuck Pointers Union, yes. they were doing restoration and tuck pointing on the exterior of the building. And the chimney was in bad shape. It yeah. had been hit by lightning oh. prior to us owning it. Oh. And there was existing damage there. So the Tuck Pointers took care of that. And as you can see in that slide, I constructed the forms for the capping stone oh. on top of the brickwork. Oh, interesting. And then, uh, Sherry, let's bring up the uh, next one. Ambrose, you're on a ladder, and, and another fella is there, too. You're right there. I, I don't know if you, if you recall that one. But uh, uh, you're up uh, on a ladder up yeah, there. Yeah, that's quite possible that that's uh, Peter Dolan's son, Brian, yeah. Brian Dolan. They were also volunteers oh, in the Heritage. Okay, sure. And uh, Peter Dolan was from Dublin, and he was a bus driver. Oh. Now, when I first got to know Peter, yeah. I would ask when they came in the door, do you have a trade? <laughs> and Peter said to me, put me where you need me the most. <laughs> he would sweep the floor oh. and put out the garbage. Oh. And Excellent. an all round worker, yeah. a valuable worker. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. you need someone to. Uh, when I think of the best kind of worker that could come through the door would be a man or a woman that could change a pane of glass in a window, prime and paint it, and clean up their own mess. Yes. That was the best kind yeah, of volunteer yeah, yeah, yeah. that came to the heritage. Yeah, clean up their own mess is the key. Exactly. And then we have uh, another one. You're mixing concrete, and I think uh, Looney was your water boy there. That's right, Tom uh, Looney. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, was that in the basement? That was in the basement, in yeah. the boiler room. Yeah, they're, they're your, uh, what your we were doing there, we had two boilers uh, let me give you an idea. When we purchased the building, uh, the boilers were high pressure. Oh. And there's very strict regulations when you have high pressure boilers, yeah. uh, you must have a stationary engineer around the clock. Oh. We couldn't afford to pay yeah, that. Yeah. Oh. So we converted the boilers to low pressure. Oh, I didn't realize and in, that. And in that way, we didn't need to have a stationary engineer continuously because we didn't have the money to pay them. Yes, yes. And what's going on there, we were building a new arched brick with fire brick oh. inside the boilers. Oh, okay. Those boilers require maintenance every year. Now, you know, Ambrose, what amazes me is that if you were in charge of everything, how did you know what to do? I mean, you didn't know well, what to do. I mean, you had to have people to help you. you know. I had to have people help me. But the biggest task of all, if we got 75 or 80 volunteers yes. to find a job in the building, to put them to work and have the equipment there, yes. I would be begging and borrowing from other contractors yeah. for equipment to keep them projects going. Yes. Going. Now, there was great people out there. You take, like when we were doing the elevator shaft. Yes. Joe Kilroy, he, w he was a mason contractor, and he'd call me up and say, I'm very busy, Ambrose. I can't come and give you any time. Yeah. But put me down for a donation for some materials. Okay. Do you need something? I said, yes. We need cement block, eight inch yeah. cement block. Yeah. We need common bricks. We need sand, cement, yeah. lime. And he would get an order together, pay for the order, and have it delivered to oh, the heritage. Excellent, excellent. People like that yes. were like gold to us. Yes, yes, yes. Now, Pat Burke would put the reins on the spending. If there was any items that we could not uh, pay for, he would tell me, ease up on the spending. Now, we got w one more picture showing a lot of volunteers. We'll see how it looks on the screen here. But, but you had a lot of people there uh, uh, in, in, in this one uh, picture showing you at the, all those people. Yes, that was taken in the entrance of the library. Entrance of the library? Yes. Now, there were so many people from all walks of life. Yes. If we were going to have a group picture, as soon as the ladies served the lunch, yeah. I would let them know before they leave the kitchen we're going to the second floor mm -hmm. for a group picture. And the group is male and female. That's right. The ladies from the kitchen came with yes, us. Yes, yeah, because they were a very oh, important very, part. Very, very, very important. Yeah. We had uh, one particular lady there, uh, Maureen Henley. Yes. 
And she was there like from day one. And uh, let me think now for a minute. Mary Ganley. Okay. Mary and Jim Ganley were, they have both passed away. They were very involved in the Heritage Center and great supporters and worked the kitchen. And Jim Ganley was a plasterer and he came there and he worked with the plasterers. Mm. And then uh, you mentioned uh, in the library. You yes, know, uh, what, what in the, the library now. Peg Reed yes. was there ahead of me. Yeah, Peg Reed, I, yeah. I'm a very good friend yeah. of Peg Reed. Peg Reed was a librarian <laughs> for the Chicago libraries. Yes, yes. On the south and, side, yeah. And she was in charge of 16 libraries yes. in the Chicago area yes. and had a tremendous knowledge yeah. about the library. Very fine lady. Fine lady. And her husband was a carpenter. That's correct. Yeah. He worked there with us. Yeah. Uh, Joe Reed. Yeah, Joe Reed. Yeah, yeah, yeah Union yeah. Carpenter <laughs> from Local 58. Yeah. <laughs> now, when we started the library, what a lot of people are not aware of, there's two steps up into the library. Yes. And the reason for that, the existing floor of the library is only good for 16 pounds, 60 pounds yeah. per square foot of yeah. live load. The library floor calls for 200 pounds. Oh my God. So we had to strengthen that floor yeah. with flex core slabs that were special order. Pat McCarthy, Bam. He, he figured out, calculated yeah. what size yeah. and what weight yeah. they could carry. Yeah. He was fabulous to yeah. us. And uh, our workers, we had several people there like Joe Gardner and his brother Tom and Jim Kilroy and Mike Neary, all of those volunteers, Frank Duffy, yeah. Gabe Keelahan, I could go on yes. forever and ever. There'd be no end to the yeah. amount of names yeah. of all those volunteers. Yeah. And the library is the largest, I would say one of the, is the largest Irish library in the United States. I believe it would be. A lot of books. Yes, a lot of books. There. And uh, so you're, you, and then you had, a, uh, you mentioned your Gaelic classes. Yes, the Gaelic classes with were with John O'Grady. Yeah, and Kelly Shane and yeah. Doherty and Kelly Shea Doherty. Now the bar management and golf outing. I mean, uh, the golf outing then and the managing of the bar was a board of education teacher. Yeah, uh, a man by the name of Alan Duggan. Yes. Now he came to the Shamrock American Club through Bob Dyra. They were both school teachers oh. and good friends. Yeah. So he would organize the golf outings. He's still doing that today. Yes. And he was in charge of the bar as a volunteer oh. till we could afford to hire a barmaid, yeah, to hire bar people. Your bar is a slate from the chalkboard That's of the correct. classroom. Yes. Whoever, who thought of that? That was, that was smart, my idea. That was a smart yeah. move. Yes. Yeah, smart uh, the yeah. state That there. we would have something from the school from day one yeah. and still have yes. it in to make it suit yeah. our purpose. Yeah. And again, the price was right. Yeah, and then you also used the cabinet on the second floor for the display. There was there was one nice old cabinet. Come by the hills to the land where fancy is free. And stand where the peaks meet the sky and the rocks meet the sea. Where the rivers run clear and the bracken is gold in the sun. And cares of tomorrow must wait till this day is done. Come by the hills to the land. 